I didn't play this in Online Blitz. I didn't play this in a tournament before. Never, ever, ever touched this variation. I did not make a singular mistake this entire game. Welcome to my fourth recap of the Munich Chess Festival. This is probably my best, cleanest game I've ever played in my life so far. Over the board, I did not make a singular mistake this entire game. I played a 97.7 accuracy. My opponent was Adrian Wichmann, a 2125 year old from Germany, and I had the white pieces. I start off with e4, and this game is especially special because I played something for the very first time in my life. I didn't play this in online blitz, I didn't play this in a tournament before, never ever ever touched this variation. I was always pretty scared of it, but it's objectively the best thing you can do. So my opponent plays a Sicilian, and we go into something that's called the hyper accelerated dragon Sicilian. Not accelerated, not the dragon, hyper accelerated is when black goes for an early g6 instead of developing the minor pieces first, or playing d6. So I go with d4, my opponent trades pawns, and now knight c6, everything is going swimmingly so far. And now I prepared a move that I've never played before. Here, generally, I would go with bishop e3, then knight c3, and then go for a Yugoslav attack against this dragon Sicilian. But there's a really nice opportunity that the hyper-accelerated dragon gives the white pieces. And that is the ability for us to not develop our knight just yet, but use this lack of development to play the move c4 and establish a very known pawn structure in the game of chess known as the Meroxy bind. And here I have a very strong hold on d5 and I just acquire more space in this position. So my opponent pursues with bishop g7, bishop e3, knight f6, knight c3. I was still in prep at this point in the game, seven moves in, very nice four moves of which I've never played before, and now he plays knight g4. Here, he is seemingly sacrificing a knight. If I take this knight, you take my knight. And it's perfectly acceptable to take, in fact, it is theory, to take this knight, trade knights, and just go all the way back to d1. And that's what I did. Here, white is just pressuring this knight. You can defend it in a line, uh, but it's a bit less good than just going back. And so he goes back to e6, perfectly normal. You could go to c6. This is a bit more dubious, but it's still very playable. And this is what he played in the database, so I was prepared against this too. I go rook c1, developing my rook and just overprotecting this knight because black in the future wants to go with queen a5 and pressure this knight and pressure everything uh, amongst it. So you defend here with rook c1, queen a5, and now bishop e2 and I am preparing to castle. And here I had prepared long lines such as b6, b7, even castles here for black, and eventually white accrues a small advantage. But here he played something that I found extremely, first of all, completely out of book. I knew that my opponent was out of book after this move, and I had to find the way to outplay the mistake. The mistake was knight c5. Here b6 is the main move, which I prepared against, which is still theory. But knight c5 is completely out of book. Now, the engine is a madman and says that <laughs> knight c5 threatening knight takes e4 going on this pin is not even an issue of a doubt. The engine goes castles here. <laughs> After bishop takes c3, pawn take, uh, rook takes, and now knight takes, it would be actually a mistake here because queen d4, and now I'm forcing you to go back with your knight to f6, bishop h6 preventing you from castling and now black is already in trouble we can have bishop g7 things coming but the engine goes c5 putting more pressure on this and there are even some crazy lines uh with rook g8 if you take the pawn rook takes c5 the queen moves and now bishop b5 check and black is like resigning but if rook g8 we go b4 kick the queen and now we sack our queen on f6 <laughs> this is maybe prettier than the game the game is still very pretty, but this is like literally crazy here. And white just has a completely winning game because the king is, yeah, it's completely over. The king is super, super weak. So anyways, I didn't do any of this because I'm thinking with my brain and I have a human brain. And so I see this very valuable threat, but still I see an opportunity. What is the weakness that lies in this position? Black transferred their knight for the fourth time of the game. You're playing your knight, which is not a good sign, 
Don't move a piece twice in the opening, let alone four times. But here, the knight leaves the protection of d4. This is what I told myself. Your knight is leaving the protection of, C of d4 to go to c5. And so d4 is less protected now that the bishop and knight are not covering it both. There is something that is known as the Sicilian bishop. This is the bishop on g7. It's known as a very, very strong bishop. It razors through diagonals. It, it tears apart villages and their villagers. And it's just a really strong piece. So best to do than to remove it. And I go bishop d4, trying to trade off the opponent's good bishop for my pretty good bishop. This is still a very gem of a bishop. But if you can weaken a king before they even castle, that's ideal. My opponent castles and defends the bishop. Anything else, I think e5 just creates a really huge hole on d5 long term. So I think this is the best move. Now I go for castles as well. I can take here and I took a sizable amount of time. You can see 13 minutes for this move. I was considering whether to take, but I thought that after castles, my advantage still stays and I can take and do check whenever I please. And it's a bit more flexible. If black wants to take me, which happens in the game, now I take with the queen and it transposes either. Actually, somebody told me this after the game. Uh, after castles, if I just take and king takes and now check and the king goes back and now I castles, it's the exact same position. So nothing has changed. So bishop takes, queen takes, and now knight e6, attacking my queen. I gotta admit, I did miss this move, but again, you're moving your knight like one, two, three, four, five times in 14 moves. You've used more than 33% of your moves for a knight move the same night too so i thought this can't be good like the engine can't like this this is what i thought but i do like this for i do like this for black a little bit short term because i don't love the squares for my queen but eventually i came up with this move queen e3 and originally i didn't i did not like this move because queen c5 just offers a trade and i cannot substantiate the advantage concretize the advantage from this knight moving seven times but here, the engine gave a line, which I cannot see at the moment, but I believe it was just taking, taking, this is what I had prepared, b4, the knight goes back, and then knight d5. And here, yeah, I'm winning back the pawn. So here, my opponent goes for d6. And this, again, felt odd. Choosing the endgame was the best decision by my opponent. I'm mind blown that this is actually uh, the truth. So on d6, what I really appreciated is just activity. When you have an upper hand that's clear, you can feel it. Our upper hand is clear. I am a way more developed than my opponent. Four of my pieces are out and my king is castled. My opponent has a castled king as well, but only two pieces out. This rook is not out, this bishop is not out. So I have this rook and this bishop of, of advanced development in my development. You understand? <laughs> so d6. And d6 doesn't develop these pieces immediately. So I have one or two moves to win that developmental game. And so I go with the most active moves and the most very logical moves. Knight d5. Attacking the c7 pawn and forcing either queen back here or rook e8 here. My opponent goes rook e8. Which I thought queen back is better because now on rook e8 I can have another active move. b4. I played it almost immediately, right? Yeah, two minutes I took. B4. Knight d5, I play b4. Attacking the queen now. And now this b4 takes also the c5 square away from this knight. Here I'm sacrificing a pawn, but I was like zero worried about this. And I took two minutes for this move because it's so over after queen a2, it's honestly not even fun for black. Like I go f4 with the idea of f5. You can try to get back into the game with queen here, but the idea is that the queen takes too long to get back into the game. Queen b2, rook cd1 says the engine, but I had f5, which is also very strong. f5 directly, queen here to try to trade queens. And now I just take the knight and I win a piece. Like it's that bad. And if you don't, if you don't move the queen here to trade queens, uh, the next best move is g takes, e takes, 
the knight has to move. Let's say we reject this queen d4 idea. And now like rook c3 is plus five. And I'm just checkmating this king in the next moves. Like it's completely over. And so the engine wants rook cd1 to protect against queen d4 and just saying, you know what? I have time, I have space and I have energy and you have nothing. And f5, you can't prevent. F5 yourself. And there's e takes, g takes and bishop h5. And these pieces are just coming into the attack so quickly. It's over. So my opponent cannot take, took a long reflection and said, you know what? I'm giving up this game psychologically. 20 minute turn, queen d8 played on the board. And we see now that these pieces are completely gone. Super passive, only one piece is developed now. Now I go with f4, straight up. I'm marching with f5, I'm opening up this king side and I'm, I'm capturing that king. My opponent goes knight c7 trying to trade off this knight. And this is the first time I was really challenged in this game because I don't, there are possibilities for me to do whatever. I calculated a few of each. I tried each sample and eventually I, I went with a move which I wouldn't go for normally. And this was a great move. This is probably one of my best moves I've ever played like in my life. <laughs> and I had a brilliant move this game, but this move is absolutely pure quality. Knight c7, I have three options. Either I do nothing with my knight and I play like f5. On f5, I didn't love this because the knight can trade. I can take back. If I take back with the e-pawn, bishop takes here and I didn't see that this sacrifice worked. So I have to kind of take with the c-pawn and then I don't like my attack. This e5 square is weak. I just didn't love this overall. I thought that my attack loses steam. So I didn't play f5. I looked at knight takes c7, which keeps the initiative and keeps going and then f5 but still i saw queen b6 that just aims to pin my queen and trade them i kind of miss c5 uh because maybe queen takes here i didn't like but a3 apparently is still good for white I, I didn't go into this so i played the final option i played knight c3 which is a great move the best move in this position retains the advantage and this is one of those extremely rare times that you go back in chess and it's a fantastic move we just talked about undeveloping a piece being bad i undeveloped a piece here and it's good <laughs> because my advantage on the board is still there while i keep the disadvantage of my opponent there as well this knight remains terrible on c7 with no future prospects completely controlled and puppeted by my pawn on c4 and e4 might i add so my opponent goes e6 now, if you try to defend with e, with f5, this would have been a big mistake because I take, bishop takes, and now g4 with f5 myself. Like this is, yeah, I prepared this. So e6 was played, and now this creates a huge weakness, this d6 pawn. But I don't know what my opponent does anyways, if not e6. So e6, I guess it's a good, it's the best move in this position. So here I go with e5. And directly we see the plan of this knight going to e4, going to f6, right in play. If my knight goes to f6, it's practically winning for white, like insane, that easy. So what I saw is that after you take, I take and you can't defend against knight e4, knight f6. Straight up, like this knight is useless against defending against this f6 square. And of course, this bishop is light squared, can't defend against this f6 square. So my knight is literally like a powerhouse, cannot be stopped. So my opponent goes d5. And now again is a hard decision. What do you do here? I cannot play knight e4 and I cannot take here. Actually, this was not a hard decision. I played this move very quickly in my memory. I think I went rook cd1. Yeah, I played this in two minutes. Rook fd1 is prepared by is preferred by the engine, but I want to go f5, f6, maybe in the future. The rook to d1 is very simple. I'm reinvigorating this threat of knight e4 because I'm pinning this pawn to the queen. That's what I just wanted to do. I am also pressuring this, but this is secondary. If I'm offered a pawn on d5, I might not even take it and favor this plan. My opponent gets out of the pin, reinvigorating this threat on e4 or protection of the e4 square. And now you're taking off a defender of d5 while striking against another one of my pawns. Another difficult decision arises. Do I take and trade these pawns or do I go c5? So on c5, my attack is like, it's not going anywhere. I can't take this anymore. Instead, I want to open up the position because 
every piece here is passive, it's they're not ready to defend, where all my pieces are active and are ready to defend. So I go with takes here. You can take directly, but then I have d6, so you can't really take directly and d7. Uh, if the knight goes here, yeah, I, I'll play what I, I would play here what I played in the game. So my opponent takes first, I take with the rook and sacrifice my rook. That was super anticlimactic, but it needed to be said. It's the best move of the position. It's the only move that takes upon that's winning here. If you take with the knight, knight takes, rook takes, and you don't keep the, the best pieces on the board. This rook is not doing much for us. Whereas if you take back with your knight here on d5, now I'm going knight f6, which is the plan we always wanted. And I'm defending f4, just cherry on the cake. And let's say, let's do a sample line here. I want to do it. If queen here, rook d1, even more patient than knight f6. And if queen here, knight f6 check, king h8, we take, queen takes. I'm up a full pawn, and I'm going like rook c1 and invading. It's completely over, like, it's resignable. Even here, I'm not even maybe taking this. Yeah, the engine says g4. This knight is better than a rook here, and g4 takes up the h3 square for ourselves to go queen h4 and try to checkmate the opponent. So this is what I had prepared. My opponent wanted none of this embarrassment and took on b4, which is, I think, okay. It's a good decision. But now the queen is loose. And I thought for a very long time about how to chase this queen. I have some tries here. Rook c5, rook d4. And ultimately, rook c5, I thought for a very long time, I almost played it. No, I almost played another move that was terrible. Here there's knight e6, and then my, my rook loses its footing, unfortunately. And then I saw a rook that was I saw a rook move that was so good I almost played it so much that I did this. Like when you do this, you're 75% playing a chess move. And I almost played this, which would have ruined my my tournament, ruined my game, ruined my day, ruined my year probably. This would have just lost a rook after queen takes. I realized it right as I was putting my hand down. So not close to the piece, but I was like this, and I was like, okay, whoops. <laughs> So I didn't play this, thankfully. I played rook d4. Rook d4, I attack the queen, I kick the queen. The queen now has less and less good squares. I didn't want to, this is the first move I considered. I was deterred away from it because of queen b6, which I was scared of, which is played in the game. And I, I had missed like the follow-up that's super simple. And then I came back to thinking about the move, saw rook d4, saw queen b6, and then found rook b1. Rook b1 and now this heroic knight. The knight is the hero of the story, defending this rook, attacking this queen and suddenly you have a finite amount of moves for the black pieces so on your opponent's time which is down to 25 minutes you're calculating okay my opponent has four options option one let's calculate option one option two option three option four and once you're done with option four you know what your next move is it's amazing when you play a forced move in chess or should I say a forcing move in chess? So my opponent has only a few moves here. Queen c6, which I looked at, but I think this just gives bishop f6, and my bishop is just better, and your queen is just has just less squares. Queen a5 is a move. Queen a5, I think I had maybe rook a4. I didn't have this. I think I had bishop c4. I'm not sure. Oh, knight e4. Knight e4. White just wants knight e4 and knight f6. So um whoops no no take that out bez bez take that out of the footage please uh and then lastly i think there's queen e6 like there's three moves and on most of the moves i'm going 94. so that's my plan and now my opponent takes almost all of his time to absolutely shock me and play knight d5 <laughs> i did not see this at all knight d5 and now here if i take the queen you take my queen and my my advantage is not present so I have to think on rook takes, queen takes, and I'm losing. So I have to take this uh, and then sack a rook. Or I have to go queen d2. So I was thinking between both moves and I was coming to the conclusion that both moves are completely winning. The queen going back to d2 threatens this queen and then threatens this knight. Now obviously you're looking at the eval bar saying, Zach, you're wrong. And this is actually true, I'm wrong here because after knight takes c3, rook takes b6, knight takes c2, and low key, black is back into the game having a bishop and a rook for a queen. White is still winning, but yeah, it's kind of, uh, it's close. 
but I thought that here after takes, takes was forced and I'm completely winning. So in the game, I still thought that this was an excellent move, but then I saw this and calculated this and then weighed both of the moves and saw that knight takes d5 is just absolutely clinical. The knight hops to d5, attacks the queen and threatens a fork. We are sacrificing a rook, but on rook d1 threatening the queen, now we have two threats on the board at once. You can sacrifice your queen or you can play the coolest variation of chess that I really, really wanted to happen on the board, but didn't. Queen f5 is met by literally a stunner, knight f6. This should be a brilliant move. Here we are sacrificing a knight because of this pin and giving a knight to take up the escape square of this king. And after the queen is taken, we have checkmate in two moves on this black king. Wow. I really wanted this variation to happen, but my opponent went for queen c2. If you take my rook, I just take back, and this pending threat this time is just enough to win. And I have queen, I have a queen and bishop. No, I have a queen and knight for two rooks. It's completely winning because nothing is developed here and the king is weak. It's, it's over. So my opponent goes queen c2, and now I go knight f6 check. And here I was like a bit puzzled because it's just completely winning and I don't know why um, I, I, I was paranoid that I was kept I kept missing something here but King f8 surely enough after Queen a3 check my opponent resigns because on King g7 I take the rook and on rook up I just win a full rook here and on any check like this you run out of checks and I have King h1 and even on this it's checkmate here so white is just completely completely is over and yeah that is one of my first games in which I completely rip my opponent to shreds without giving any piece of the puzzle back to my opponent. It is one of my cleanest games of chess I've ever played against a higher rated opponent. I swept the floor and we're going into round five. I have two out of four in the section of 2000 ELO plus. Reminder, I started this section uh, at uh, 50 seconds position and out of 70 players and now I'm scoring half which is which is really good and might I tell you that for the rest of the tournament I went undefeated in round five I am tested against an international master from the Netherlands the country I am living in right now who is having a bad tournament mm -hmm.